Hey everyone, this is Jana Nascimento Nagasi from Your Jana on Camera, and today I have the pleasure to be talking to two talent actors, Gayle Drew Stamen and Kevin Joy. How are you guys doing today? Hi, thank you for having good, us. We're yeah. good. How are you? Thank you so much. And today we're going to be talking for a movie that's called Follow Your Heart that is going to be premiered on Sunday, October 4th on Hallmark Channel. And it's, I'm very excited to know about it. Can you tell us a little bit about the story of this movie? You want to start us off? Sure. Uh, so, uh, Galadriel plays Kathy, who grew up in the Amish community. Um, and as she's close to becoming an adult, she kind of ab abruptly leaves the community to go see what's out in the world. Um, she becomes a travel writer in a major city. I play Isaac Mast, who uh, is Amish also and grew up in the community, who she broke his heart and left. Uh, but she comes back one time to the community to deal with some family issues and we bump into each other and uh, kind of reconnect that friendship and she's got to kind of figure out what's, what's in life for her. Is it her life back in the big city and what she wanted there or is there a place for her in the Amish community and uh, the, the value that she finds being back with the Very different the worlds community. and yeah. uh, Kathy's lucky. She's got great stuff in both places, so... I don't think it's an easy answer for her. Did you knew a lot of about Amish before going to, to the set? Well, uh, funny enough, uh, this is my second Amish movie. So um, I was glad that all the research that I did, you know, I, I'm not as Amish in the movie as he is, but I still needed <laughs> to know a lot about it. Uh, I was glad that I got to use that all again because I had done so much research before. Um, and so we both, you know, tried to take it as seriously as possible. Um, you know, the joke is sort of that a traditional Amish person won't ever watch the movie because they don't watch movies. But, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we're respectful and that we can get to the heart of what their life is about. And so we've both read tons of books. Uh, we definitely own the Idiot's Guide to the Amish. We have like a little Amish like shelf now that has all of our variety of stuff. We've watched tons of documentaries. And so, um, and the first time I played Amish, I had the opportunity to talk to some people who were Amish or formerly Amish because of the area that we shot in. So, you know, I think every actor always wishes that they could do more, feels like there's more they would like to know. But I think with the time we had to prepare and stuff, I, I feel pretty good about, um, be, that we we're trying to be as respectful and accurate as possible. I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, and we were fortunate enough because there's actually, you know, the uh, Amish people don't want to be on camera, right? And they, they don't want to speak on camera. It's kind of against their principles. But there are actually some good Amish documentaries that have audio recordings with the Amish people and that kind of uh, shoot from afar so that it's respectful uh, that we were able to watch, which was actually a really great insight into the community and actually getting to hear the voices of the people who live in that community and you know, their thoughts and what their day and their life is like. Yeah, it's a responsibility, you know, like as an actor and, and the director has this responsibility just to to transfer to the screen like in a in a good way. And I think I think you guys did a pretty good job. You know what I mean? <laughs> I watched the movie yesterday and I think you did a pretty good job and was very respectful with the, the whole community. Uh, did you did you did you guys were inside a uh, Amish community? Uh, this was actually not in an actual Amish community. We shot the entire movie in Arkansas, and although uh, I have since learned that there are different Amish communities mm -hmm. in Arkansas, they weren't in the area where we were. Uh, so all of that had to be brought there. But I, I should add, before production, uh, the director and the DP went to some of the tra more traditional Amish communities in Ohio to get some of the landscape and some of those shots and also just to research from their end mm -hmm. to make sure that they were portraying it accurately. So anything you see the actors in uh, would be in Arkansas and any of the things that you see that are, you know, aerial shots, some of the farm work and stuff that's different uh, were actually from some Amish communities in Ohio. And uh, this question is more for Kevin because he was more in the character of Amish. How, how much time did you spend like putting the, the, the character on it? Uh, or putting on like all, all the clothes and everything? Yeah. Yeah, the clothes, and then they have the beard, super yeah. funny. Oh, you tell her about that beard. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the clothes were actually pretty simple because every day I basically wore the same thing. Just got a button-up shirt with my suspenders and the, the pants and stuff. Um, 
Yeah, the beard, I grew out the beard for it. Uh, and it, it took me a little while to kind of get used to it. Well, I think set. we should clarify in case people don't know, because you can't just say beard. When I hear beard, I think yeah. of yeah. like, beard we're talking a beard with no mustache so i think we should clarify that for people that are watching it's not yeah. a look that most people are used to seeing out just right beard and that's very no manicured mustache. on the bottom so it's a very specific look so uh on set was great but the first few days that we were in arkansas i was like a little hesitant about going out just because of the, like having to get used to having this strange beard uh, out in public and stuff. So, like I made her go in the subway for me and like going to Walmart and stuff. I was like, I need a couple of days to just kind of ease into this. And we're already like these like LA weirdos in this yeah. like small town in Arkansas. So as it is, like we felt very conspicuous in some yeah. ways. And then, and then after a few days, I was like, into it and normal and we we're just going out to eat and doing all that kind of stuff but you know if he'd get an audition when we were there he'd be like trying to put on like a fake mustache or something because he didn't want to film an audition yeah. with just a beard and it would just be a day off so you know it's kind of it was funny to try yeah. to figure out how to make it like there were times when we were trying to like paint in more stuff on his face. yeah i'd have the makeup artist <laughs> mustache on the auditions i had to put on tape and stuff like that so i could try to look somewhat normal for taped auditions less homage less homage less homage yeah, but that, that I think it I think it's great because it's, it's really different, especially for me. And I think it's like the way that they they act, the way that they think is really different. And I think it's great the way that you that you guys that you guys portray on screen. And 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 for you, uh, Galadriel, you the director was a woman with Sandra, correct? And how was like work with like with a director like like her? Uh, I loved working with Sandra. In fact, we've talked with them many times about trying to find ways to work together again. Um, and I think what was a really cool mirror for us is that the director and Sandra and the director of photography, Isaac, are also a married couple. So you had the, the two people who were the on-set leaders and then, you know, the two of us who were the two leads of the movie, both having that dynamic. And so they were really a good team too. But uh, they, the thing about working with Sandra that was so great is she's so um, sensitive and just emotionally, it's so important to her to tell the story in a way that is detailed, gives the channel and things like that what they want, but balancing it that with being accurate and truthful and also just super collaborative you know yeah. i can't i don't know if i've ever worked on a project where a director asked me so many times what i thought about a choice how i felt about something um and so it really felt like a true collaboration which uh we don't always get and i don't think we expect that sometimes we're just there to do our job and hit our marks and give them what they want and move on and that's okay but it's nice to have a project like this every now and then where you're like I'm a part of not just this but I'm being included in the creative process too. yeah and Sandra's also just and I, I mean, Isaac is wonderful too Sandra is just so warm so like just from my very first day on set because I, I came in a little bit later after they had done some of the city stuff um, but she was just so warm and welcoming that like day one I felt right at ease and uh, she's also a wonderful writer mm -hmm. and stuff like that too. So she just had great ideas for maybe some day of changes or new scene ideas or all that kind of and stuff. And she did a lot of the really rewrites. Great. She did a lot of the yeah. rewrites on this. And then pairing her with um, Isaac, who is just this, I mean, the movie's beautiful, the way it's shot, the eye. So when, you know, you combine his eye and creativity with that, with her like leadership and doing that. I mean, it's just like, a dream team, you know, and, <laughs> yeah, you know, they live and they live in Kansas. They, they do everything working out of there and traveling where they need to go yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it was one where we were definitely like, okay, so what are you guys doing next week, next summer? When are we all working together again? Because uh, we just love them. And so we're, 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 we've been talking to them lately about trying to find another project soon that we could kind of all work together again on. Yeah. I think this is wonderful because make your, 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 job easier when oh, yeah. you have this this collaboration and uh, i also want to mention that your kids are on the movie too right uh, yeah so, <laughs> i know that it's not a how, like how how them on set how <laughs> work with them <laughs> well uh it, yeah so it's 
it's interesting because, you know, you have uh, a 10 year old son and a four year old son and neither are actors. Um, I mean, I think all children are actors in their own way. I should say neither are professional actors. Um, and when they came to us to do the film and asked if we'd be comfortable bringing the kids as well, my first thought was like, can they do that? Like, I don't know. Can they has, hit marks and do all that? So I think initially, uh, you know, that whole thing where I was like, I, I don't know, but uh, they wanted to make it a very family friendly thing. So uh, we knew there'd be no pressure on them. They were there mostly to just have fun and enjoy being there with his parents came. They, they flew his parents out to be with the kids. Yeah, it was the amazing. Whole time. So my parents got to be with us. So it's like, you know, it's not normal that when you're shooting on location that you get to see your family all the time, right? Sometimes it can be a, kind of a tough time that you're not getting to see your family a lot. But it's like every day that we got done with work, you know, we go back to the house that we were staying at and it's like, our kids are there, my parents are there. Well, and not only that, but if we didn't have the kids come one day for lunch, like the producers would be like, yeah. where's the kids? And yeah. so like the chefs would make like a special lunch for them every day, pizza and corn, just in case the kids came. Uh, so it was really like an awesome family vacation, yeah. uh, summer vacation, you know, it was like, and it was perfect that it happened when school was out. And so, you know, they got to go That's do cool. that. But our oldest son, definitely, uh, not an actor, not at all. We totally bribed him, uh, to do the movie because he's like, I'm not going to be in camera. And we were like, what's it going to cost, man? And so it was a Nintendo Switch. Um, I think everybody won in that deal, but now that it's out and as you know, he's got friends he wants to like share stuff with. He's very proud that he gets to say that he's going to be in the movie, but then our little one, I mean, that's a different story. Yeah. So he, you know, so they, they were on set, uh, for, for one day when they were actually in the film and stuff. And, uh, one of the scenes that we have, we have a dinner scene with her sister who she's kind of been estranged from. And so, you know, our kids are playing her sister's kids. So her, her uh, nephews. So we were trying to get our youngest Sawyer to sit still. Well, and they're not supposed to know yeah, they me. Don't know They've her. never met me before. So every time that she comes into the house, Sawyer's trying to get up out of the chair. I'm like, mommy, mommy. I'm like, go run to her and give her hugs. So we're like, dude, you got to stay in the chair. And so, he's two. Like, yeah. you can't explain that to a two-year-old. So we're like, what can we yeah. do? Like, do you want a cookie? Do you want to, like, watch a little show on the like, iPad off in the corner or something? Like, what's going to help you to stay there? And uh, Glidro realized that he was watching the monitor. Uh, where they would do like village. playback of the scenes that we had just filmed. Yeah, and was loving it. And so she asked him. No, 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 it didn't right? start that way. It started with him going, I'm on TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, is that good? And he was like, yeah, I want to be on TV. And we were like, oh, no. And then I was like, well, if you want to be on TV, go sit in that chair. And he just like ran in and sat down and just hammed it up for the rest of the time and, and it so like, it was like a perfect. momentary victory yeah. but then we were like we are in so much trouble with that child yeah like, but then he was like perfectly like in the movie like doing his role after that like not getting up out of the chair at all and we were like oh boy yeah. oh but it <laughs> yeah was he he was born to be an actor uh, yeah i know yeah we'll see we feel like we're a little unbalanced in that area already in our family like there's no chance that atticus our oldest is gonna go in like he's probably gonna be like our voice of reason as like the three of us like acting crazy it's just you know like it's already a weird life but the poor kid's surrounded now so yeah. you know he's he wants to be our architect or something so uh you know we're like great you can take care of us then when we're older and <laughs> you can be the stable one Oh, that's great. I love that. I love that. You, you, uh, I, I can feel that the set was like a big, big family, you know, all yeah. the, not just your kids, like the other kids and the, the director and the, the DP, everybody. I think it's great. And, and, and how was like to work with Jonathan Patrick Moore? Oh, well, we call him Jono. <laughs> that's what his friends call him. He goes by Jono. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, first of all, um, he and I, met because something crazy that happened was when we were flying to Arkansas, there weren't any direct flights. Uh, I was actually flying from a wedding in the Bay Area. He was flying from LA, but everything had to lay over somewhere. So we both ended up on different flights, but that both laid over in Dallas. And there were all these tornadoes that night. Filming started the next morning at 8 a.m. and no flights were leaving. So Jono and I actually both got stuck in Dallas, had not met, uh, just got phone numbers from like the thing. And I was like, I think we're both stuck here. So we're in some like random hotel, not knowing when we can get out. Everybody's going to be on set at eight o'clock that next morning. And so we ended up like getting on a flight and going and 
he has a young child too, very family focused. And so we immediately became close friends and bonded over the fact that even though it wasn't our fault, we had to walk on to set late. We were the only people who needed to be in the movie so far. So everybody's just waiting for us to show up on the plane. They rushed us off the plane and, and got us there. Um, but then we were all just inseparable the whole time. Yeah. Kevin joined later, uh -huh. uh, flew in. And then since then, we've become really close with his family. They have a baby food company that uh, our friends have kind of been pairing up with them to help them launch. And we've seen them for countless, like barbecue, pre, pre COVID, of course, barbecues and pool parties and uh, it's funny because they're one of those families that now we're super close to. Well, it's, it was nice because a lot of, you know, a lot of times when you're on set, like you get really close to people really fast because you're all there for long days. It's like summer camp. Yeah. And, but a lot of times after that, you know, everyone goes back to their normal life. You try to keep in touch a little bit, but you know, you kind of part way sometimes, but we've stayed super close with Jono and his family and like you're saying, hang out. So it's, it was really cool to have an experience on set to have Jono, who's a great guy and a great actor and then just create a, a great friendship with him and his family that we we stayed friends after, which is rare and really cool. Yeah, you always say you're going to, yeah. you know, oh, well, let's all hang out, let's do, let's do lunch, whatever, but it, yeah, it just doesn't happen that much. So uh, it's nice when it actually does. Yeah. And now they are friends with our friends and um, our kids have become friends. So uh, it's great. I mean, it just, there's like family all around on that movie. <laughs> No, I think that I think that's great, and and you talk about the the the, the meetings, like all the gatherings pre COVID. Uh, how much do you think is gonna this like some of the productions are coming back right now? How much do you think that is gonna affect the 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 way that we, we you guys be on set? You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, it already has changed a lot. Yeah. I think it's, you know, everything is slowly coming back, which is really great. Uh, you know, auditions are picking up. I had a movie I was supposed to do uh, in New Orleans last April that obviously got put on hiatus with everything happening in March. Uh, they've rescheduled that we're going out there in October and November to shoot, which is exciting. And it just seems like everybody is getting kind of the protocols down about how we can do it safely, you know, do production, but make sure we're tested, make sure everybody on set is, you know, masked up and doing everything safely. So I think as the industry has figured out how to handle all of this, um, which is difficult because being on set is, is by nature a close proximity kind of thing. Um, but I think that everyone's figuring it out. And so I think all, you know, soap operas have picked back up and all these productions are starting again as, as I think everyone's more comfortable with the procedures to, to keep everybody safe. But I think it's, you know, it's a learning curve for everybody. And I think our industry, just like a lot of industries initially was like, okay, so we're just going to wait until this is over and then we're going to go back to normal. And then things haven't ended and we see that it's going to be a new normal. And so I think the shift is now that people are trying to figure out how to continue forward despite. And that takes a lot of adaptation. You know, I had my first um, reading with a director the other day uh, on the computer. I've done plenty of tapes during this time. But it was just so strange to be in an audition, waiting for my turn, and they're all on the screen. And here I am here trying to figure out, like, like I had him call me ahead of time, like, what's it look like if I look over here? I don't know. Uh, so I, on both sides, we're all adapting. But hopefully that means that we're all going to be back to work fully soon but still safe yeah. Um, because yeah, you don't need new movies. You don't need new TV shows, but I think a lot of people have used that to help get through this time. And so as much as other people want to make sure that they still have new stuff to watch, like we want to be working, we want to be yeah. telling stories. Well, yeah. thank goodness yeah. for technology like this, that we can talk and, yeah. and still feel like we're somewhat normal and can see people and all that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For, for us, like journalists, I've been, talking to people since April like this and I was like well this is the new normal all the junkets all the interviews that I have is like this so I don't know it's the new normal we can well, we need to adjust <laughs> in some ways it makes it easier to get to talk to people you know I did uh, a zoom interview with my university in Kentucky this morning and you know before it might be like a phone call or they'd be like oh if you're in town or whatever and now it's the same as if I had you know done this interview done whatever and so uh, I think in some ways it can make the world a little smaller in a good way. And so I hope that no matter what happens and what our new normal is, that like that continues on um, because it opens up a lot more possibilities, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. So I want to thank you guys so much for your time. And it's a pleasure to talk to you both. And 
I wish you a lot of success and I cannot wait for everybody to watch on Sunday, follow your heart. Oh, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. We love doing thank this. you for having it. We can't yeah. wait. We're going to be live tweeting the whole time. So yeah. if anybody wants to ask us questions, have at it. Yeah. <laughs> if you like this video, don't forget to comment, to like, and subscribe to our channel right here.